Okay team, so this is how I work this really quick. You'll notice that I've changed this beta software. I got tools up here. You got your standard old tools. And then I got a beta software in here. Um, and I'm using the Amazon keyword FE. After this beta gets approved by people liking it, then I'll move it over. If I gotta change some stuff, and then I will uh, keep changing it until everybody's happy, and then we'll move it into the to replace the the live one here. Okay, so this is just beta. What I've done was I replace the the red code, so now it's giving me the exact price instead of the um, the the price that Amazon decides to give me off of the API. I know it sounds weird. But in the programming sense, I have this idea of how to grab the red price at all times. And sometimes the item doesn't have the red price. Okay, what, what I mean by the red price is when you go to Amazon, I've had this question asked, like, what do you mean by the red price, Caesar? So, so let, me, let me pull it up Amazon so I can show you. And I'm just going to click on this Batman logo here. And then you'll see the red price is this one here. I, also known as the buy, the buy box price. And so I'm calling it the red price. That's the code that we're going to get for this particular example here. But um, just so you're clear, that's the red price. And not all the time did I get the red price. Sometimes Amazon pulled this price because $4.99 is cheaper than $5.97. And so if we click inside the, the new price, you'll notice that it's actually not even $4.99. Uh, it's actually a dollar more because it costs for shipping. But Amazon would not tell me that. They would give us the API price. That's the programming language price, right? Um, and they would give me the lowest price, which which makes sense to them, but doesn't make sense to us because all we want is the prime price. Moving on. So no, no, noting that, you'll notice that we don't have um, a store to pick because we're not going to calculate the prices. I'm actually going to grab the, the red price for you and dump it into the CSV file directly. And then we're going to calculate the price based off a of percentage. And that percentage is totally up to you and what you want to make. But that's going to be your markup price, your your markup from what you're you're going to buy it at after eBay and PayPal fees. But that's not going to be calculated on the software. All we're doing is grabbing the red price. We're going to calculate the fee and then um, that we want to make rather the, the profit, and then we'll uh, we'll list it. So I hope that makes sense. You'll see more how this works here in a second. Um, so let's go ahead and enter the information that we need for the store our PayPal email address, and then I'm going to do a keyword search. This keyword search is, let me just do Christmas lights. Okay. And I've been listing a lot of uh, different items, but, you know, please change up your keywords, do something different. In this example, we don't want anybody to have competition on the team here. So just, uh, you know, do, do what you feel is best, but try not to duplicate this example or else we're all going to be listing the same stuff. Okay, fair enough. And then category, it's going to be... Um, well, it actually doesn't matter. If we, if we don't pick a category, it's not going to give us 100 items. It'll give me 50, but that's okay for this example. I'll just leave it at all. The minimum price that I want to grab is something between uh, $5 and let's do 30 Okay, and then we're just going to grab 50 and then I'm going to do a quantity of two. Uh, why do I do two? I, I've actually had some pretty cool uh, good luck doing the two because I've had... Um, items sell and then, and then they, they keep on selling or a person wants to buy two they'll buy two off of me and um, it gives them an option to buy more than one which you know why, why do you want to leave money on the table if you want to do three you can do three but you'll notice that I don't I no longer have what do you want to make on, on the high end and what you want to make on the best offer I'm actually just grabbing the uh, price I'm not grabbing the best offers and so that's been eliminated from the software if you guys want me to add that back I know some people still use the best offers but I've had complaints of people saying, I don't want to deal with best offers. I just want the buy it now price. Well, you know, there's, there's ways to uh, to delete that as well. So just let me know. Uh, very simple. This is all we're going to do here. So let me go ahead and submit the, the file. Once you hit generate CSV, you're going to go ahead and dump that file inside of wherever you like. Um, I like to throw it into to my download section because downloads gets pretty busy. So just save it here and then go ahead and open the file and Okay, some things to verify here. Once you have your Excel file up, you'll notice that we have different columns than maybe you're used to if you're using Turbo Lister. So uh, let's take an, uh, from the custom label here, let's take an ASIN number here, and we're just going to copy this and verify that this price is the, matter of fact, the red price, the, the start price, 1949. So let's go to the ASIN that I just copied, search for that, 
Okay, and then 1949, there it is. That's the item. And we have three images right there provided by Amazon. Okay, so this is 1949. And then if you look right there, there's 1949. Okay, and look, there's our images. And there's one URL colon, or rather semicolon, another URL, and then another URL there. And then looks like a few more images. So all our images are there. Um, that is it. All we have to do now is calculate our price. That's going to be next. And then if you notice on this file, we have everything else kind of left to default. Okay, we don't, I don't have any um, best offers, so they're all set to zero. You'll see the best offers here enabled is set to zero. And all I have to do now is just do my titles and modify the price. So what we're going to do now is find your category ID, and we're going to be using the EDS title tool to just grab it. And we're going to use Christmas lights as the main keyword. So we're going to use the title optimizer, click search. And then in here, you're going to see the different keywords, numbers, the, the IDs, and we're going to go for the one that makes the most sense for our item. So in this case, Christmas lights fits right into the holiday garden section of Home and Garden. So we're going to copy this number right there, paste it on the categories, double click the bottom right. Okay, that way they all get populated. And what we're going to do is insert a field, and we're going to create the word new space, and we want spacers to separate the two. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and create another field, and this is where we're going to create our new title. We're going to use the formula concatenate. Concatenate allows us to merge the titles together, and that's the formula right there. You'll notice that we're going to merge D2 with E2. And then the next thing we're going to do is as you can see, our new titles are being done here. We can go ahead and uh, double click on that bottom right so they all get populated. And we're going to do the same thing for D2. Double click, that way there's new in there. Now you can see all your titles have that new word new in there. We're going to copy those titles into a notepad file. And the reason we're doing this is so we can remove the formula information, the concatenate formula, out of it. Okay, now it's in a text file. And then we can go ahead and remove those two fields. We no longer need. C or D. Those were just our temporary fields. All right. Now what we can do is copy that new title in the text file and paste it over our old title. That is just replace it. This is how you knock out a bunch of items at once. And you'll notice that they have the word new in those, in our new title there. So that's essentially what we just did. That's totally optional. You don't have to do that, but I like to uh, make my titles a little bit different. Then the standard, and then of course you want to spend some time removing a lot of the fields. The next thing we're going to do is remove uh, all the extra characters after 80. With File Exchange, it doesn't remove the characters for you when you upload. As a matter of fact, eBay will reject it. So you want to make sure you double click the bottom right to truncate the titles. Okay, and then. Um, you'll notice that all the titles get cut off, and that's okay. Something that you can do on the right-hand side in column D is you can remove some of the, the text in there to clean it up. So you want to spend some time cleaning that up. So we're going to go ahead and paste our title, our new title that's cut off, the 80-character one, right into column C. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and, and look at our prices. In, in this example, we have a calculator that I'm going to pull up. You can open up any calculator and just multiply $19.49 times 1.75. You're going to get 34.10. If you round up, it's actually 34.11. And now what we're going to do is use the New Life Auctions calculator and then check our profit if we do that. So based off of 1949 being our base price, we're going to use our item cost 1949 and then our price from our calculator is 3411 so let's enter that in there we'll make a profit of ten dollars and 26 cents on this particular item here let's do another example here with 823 on this item so we can go ahead and copy this price over to 
and if we multiply 823 times 1.75, we'll see that we'll make, you know, it, it would make it 1440. So let's go ahead and do that. And that would be $4.15 profit for us. Something to keep in mind is some items are going to have a range. That's what Amazon actually gives us. As you notice, this item is actually a sweater. I'm going to go ahead and delete this item. That's not something I want to list. Okay, and the one down here, you see where it says zero. Let's go see what's going on with this item here. As you will see, this is a book, and they actually don't give us a strictly one price by red, red price. They give us different prices. You got a Kindle, you got a hard book. And so the software's not going to be able to pick this one up. So that's why I actually stay away from books. I don't really list books, but if you want to do that item, then you, you can just input the price that the hardcover price has it at, since that is prime. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, to get the price that you want on profit, we're going to do a round. We're going to round it up in two digits. And then we're going to do the, the column right here, which is N2, N2, multiplied by 1.75, as we discussed through our calculator. So the full formula is equals round. So all you have to do is click on that column. You can open up a new column. And we're going to do equals round. OK, and then inside, <clears throat> we're going to put uh, n2 times 1.75 comma 2 which means give me two digits and then if we hit enter you'll see I got 3411 so all we have to do is double click on here boo, and it populates it all the way down our value is now multiplied by that percentage so I'm just going to replace this value and I like to just throw everything into an Excel uh, rather a, a notepad file to remove all the formula information, delete this guy, and then replace this row with our new price. And we're done. OK, uh, last but not least, OK, you always want to double check your prices, OK, meaning that uh, prior to doing this, always go through and just make sure everything's OK. For the most part, if it's going to give you a price, it's going to be a red price. If there's going to be any mistakes, like a a series of numbers, then that's going to be wrong, okay? Um, and, and that's, you know, if it's going to give you zero like we showed earlier, then again, that's that's not grabbing the right price, and so that's what's happening there, okay? Um, and then of course, you know, do your dimensions, do your weights, and then do your your weight major. Uh, when you have, you know, the 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 ounces can never be bigger than uh, 15, okay? Because it's going to give you an error. So what I do. Uh, just to make these really quick here, I'm just going to show you really quick here. This particular item, here's my item. My shipping pounds is going to be 2.2 pounds. So let's go back over here. It's going to be 2.2 right there, according to this. Okay, the software is going to give you 9.4 typically, but not always. So always double check. Um, and I guess there's really no fast way of doing this because. Again, Amazon doesn't always give you the values correct, so you just have to go through each item and do it this way if you want to be on point to the exact 9.6 ounces. Let's round up to 10. So we're just going to change that to 10. Okay. And um, if you just want to do this really quick, in, in my opinion, it, it, I think the, the weight doesn't really matter because all they want to know is can they do it global shipping. And that's really the, the key thing. And so, um, you know, if you see 91, you can round it off to uh, 15, round it down rather, and then if you want to verify again, of course you can, but uh, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to do them all, and I'm just going to go through and just fill them in really quick here. So I just want to see the, the weight on this one. See, it's 1.4 pounds, see? So you at 15, you're almost at 1 pound anyway, so you're not that far off. So I'm just going to do 15 here. That seems kind of odd that it'd be so heavy. I don't know why it's 16 pounds. Let me double check on, on this particular item here. If you, if you see something that's way off, then uh, double, double check it. 
Yeah, see, that's 4 ounces. There's no way that thing can be 16. Oh, and maybe that's a mistake. No, it's right there, 16.9 pounds. Um, seems way too heavy. And then shipping weighs 4 ounces. That just doesn't make sense. So let's do 4 here. Okay. And then I'll do uh, 5 here. I'll do 15 here or 14. 15, 15. Make sure there's no empty spaces. Set these to zero. Zero, zero. Um, you don't want to have all zeros, so just do five zeros there. Again, I'm just trying to put some values in here. If it's too high, I just do 15, just to save some time. Again, if you want to spend the time and doing doing an exact to the exact T, I, I think there's errors all the time anyway on Amazon because it's not Amazon inputting the data, it's the user. So consider this just uh, a little tip here. Um, this one doesn't have any sizes, so I would figure out what the size is on this item. I think that's kind of important. If the person wants to know what the size of the item is. So let's go check on this item. Uh, why is this on? not Christmas lights. I'm just going to remove that item. I don't want to list it. Okay, here's another item that's set to zero. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this and then uh, search that. And this doesn't look like uh, Christmas lights to me, but it is a top seller. Yeah, I'm not sure why it uh, ended up in my Christmas area, but um, for now, I'll just go ahead and remove it. And then this one here as well. There's zero, zero, zero. Copy that. That is a Christmas hanger. Okay, so uh, this one is not prime, not eligible for prime. So I would not uh, list this item. So there is uh, an item that you double, definitely want to check. These are all prime. Usually the software does give you prime, but uh, that one's not prime at the moment. So you want to make sure you double check that they are prime. Always a good idea. Uh, I guess, I mean, if you want to, if your profits are good enough, you can, you can list those, but it's totally up to you. Um, this item here is... No sizes, so we don't have sizes. That's why we get zero zero here on these. That's 130 foot length. So I guess you can put uh, 30 foot 30. What did I say? 30 foot. 30 foot length. I'm just gonna put 30 foot. I don't even know if it would take it that way. We'll see. If it gets rejected, I'll tell you the errors. But um, okay, <clears throat> that is it, guys, um, for this this file. I'm not going to mess with it too much, but I'm just kind of give you an idea of what's what's taken. We've kind of recap. We've uh, gone through, did the categories, we did our titles, okay. Um, we did our weights and sizes. We verified our images. Okay, we, we have uh, our new price based off of the red price multiplied by the, the value that we want. Okay, the markup. And always verify the markup, okay, if that's what you want. But this is a fast way of doing it. I just showed you we took a red price, multiplied it by 1.75, and we got our new price that we're going to list that to get that, to get that markup. Um, and that's it. Finally, last but not least, you want to go back and you want to click on where it says upload here. With file exchange, you don't have to close the file out like you do with TurboLister. And again, this works for both Mac and Windows, possibly even Linux. And then we're just going to save that file into our downloads folder as our final file. We're done. Yes, keep the format CSV. If you're inside of um, Macintosh, you want to go to File, Save As, Windows for CSV. Very important that you do that or else it's not going to work. 
Okay, so it's going to take you straight here to uh, this area where you want to upload the file. Choose the file, go down to your downloads folder, find the Christmas lights area, and then we're going to choose Christmas lights. That's my latest file. And click upload, and you are done. You're going to see a little message that says eBay has received the file. Go over here to view upload results when it's done. Most likely you'll get some awesome email saying items being listed within 20, 30 minutes. Okay, and uh, if you have any errors, it'll tell you there. But all 50 items should be listed. If something got messed up, again, eBay will will notify me through the uh, error file. But uh, this was uh, essentially a request, I believe. Uh, Brian asked me on the team if we can just get the red price, where you guys can just multiply the percentage and then base it off there. I think that's a uh, easier to check you and verify your prices instead of the software calculating it for you because we had we had issues where uh, before it wasn't the correct price uh, some thoughts on this new way of listing you will notice that the keyword time will take you a lot longer to get the items out because it's doing it differently it's not using their API it's going through and grabbing it from each page as it going through and, and based off the keywords it's grabbing the the price so it's taking longer but the prices are accurate okay so hopefully this video helped you out guys i apologize it's a bit uh, lengthy but uh, a lot to cover in this section we'll talk to you soon we'll see you on the next one please feel free to comment below if you have any questions